with the race for the nomination of a Republican Party contender to take on President Obama gaining intensity, Flinders in Daly spoke to Professor Howard Schwerber, a leading US academic and political commentator. American politics has been my favorite spectator of support, sport since I was about 14. Uh, uh, there is nothing that I enjoy more, just purely as a, as a fan, uh, than a good, hotly debated primary race, and this one is a doozy. Professor Schwerber, the first visiting scholar to fill the Fulbright Distinguished Chair in American Political Science at Flinders University, weighs up the candidates. Mitt Romney, Newt Gingrich, Rick Santorum, and Ron Paul. Well, now we have four candidates left in the race, and each one is a, 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 just a strong, if not strident, voice of their particular constituency. So we have Rick Santorum, who is really running as the candidate of faith, uh, the candidate of the religious rights. And, and his, his approach to politics and government uh, is deeply radical, not only for the Republican Party, but for the nation. Uh, uh, he's, you know, presidents don't really have the power to wave a magic wand and everything changes as soon as they get to the office. It doesn't work that way. Uh, there's a famous line that uh, Truman said about Eisenhower. Eisenhower had been, of course, the general of the armies in the Allied Command in World War II when he was coming to the White House. And Truman's line was, poor Ike, he'll get here and he'll say, do this and do that and nothing will happen. <laughs> uh, you know, and there's some truth to that. So our, we, our, our candidates run for president promising to remake the world and, and the, the savvier voters know that it simply doesn't work that way. It didn't work that way for Obama, and it's not going to work that way for whomever is the next president, whether that's Obama or somebody else. But the, the kind of approach to thinking about government and about American democracy and politics that Santorum brings is really radical, is, is more radical than Gingrich, even though Gingrich is the one presenting himself as the great transformer. Uh, Gingrich is running to recapture the magic that he had in the 1990s when he came in as a a backbencher, as, as, as Australians would say, in the Republican Party and led an insurgency that took over the, the speakership. He was, he was the Speaker of the House and shook up the system of the Republican Party even more than he shook up the system of American government. Abolished seniority, uh, promoted people to committee chairmanships based on loyalty uh, rather than time in the party. You know, all kinds of things that to parliamentary, to people familiar with parliamentary government, the radicalism of these moves is readily apparent. In the American system, people really hadn't realized how much the Congress ran on that kind of set of conventions. So, so Gingrich is the institutional shaking up guy. Uh, and he's running as a kind of institutional revolutionary. I, I think, frankly, he has fizzled out. I mean, he's not done. No one is going the way. Uh, uh, if you watch the numbers, it takes 1144 votes to get the nomination. Um, if Romney, for example, wins all of the races on Super Tuesday, by the same margin by which he won Florida, that will gain him a net of 150 delegates. It's a very long way to go. Uh, uh, we, will, we will be talking about Texas. We may very well be talking about California. Uh, before this is over. So I would, you know, it, 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 Santorum has had these, these wonderful victories recently, but he's netted almost no delegates, almost none of them were binding. Uh, if you look at actual number of votes cast, uh, I don't have the exact numbers with me, but roughly Romney has received about 1.2 million votes. Gingrich has received close to 900,000. Santorum is a very, very distant third with 200,000 and change. So, so you know, the, the horse race picture, uh, 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 the, the, the who's in front this week in the polls picture, looks very, very different from the actual delegate count, from the actual votes cast thus far picture. And people who take the long view, the professionals, the people who recognize that this is going to be a long primary season, uh, uh, recognize that fact. I think Santorum is starting to, to slip. Uh, his surge uh, may have topped. Uh, uh, he takes positions that really are kind of they are extreme within the Republican coalition. What I, what I mean by that is that his overt religiosity appeals very strongly to one element of the base, but not as strongly to other elements of the base. And that's starting to show a little bit. Romney is ahead now again in Michigan by the last three polls that I've seen in the last 48 or 72 hours. Uh, he's strongly ahead in Arizona. You know, and those two states are key. I wrote, I wrote a, a piece a couple of weeks ago saying, you know, watch Missouri, Arizona, uh, and Ohio. And I, and I stand by that statement. Missouri had a non-binding uh, caucus, which Gingrich wasn't even on the ballot. The reason Missouri was interesting to, was to see how Romney would do. And the answer is he stumbled terribly. Uh, now is Arizona. And I, I say that because Arizona has a very strong Tea Party presence. The Tea Party is populist and insurgent, but it's not 
heavily evangelical and it's not heavily religious, at least not, I mean, not in the way that the, the, the old moral majority was, if you remember those yeah. voices from the 80s and, and that branch of the Republican Party today. So I think it's significant that Romney is regaining great strength in Arizona. He's really quite, quite sharply ahead there. Uh, and it looks as though he will take Michigan. If Romney takes Michigan and Arizona, then coming into Super Tuesday, the fascinating one is Ohio, where Santoro maintains a lead. Ohio has a very large block of evangelical voters who are specifically looking for a religious conservative leader as opposed to simply a conservative leader, uh, and may be inclined to, 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 to continue to support Santorum. Uh, you know, Gingrich did really well with those voters in South Carolina, but that's partly because Santorum wasn't on the radar yet. So we could very easily come out of Super Tuesday. I assume Gingrich will take Georgia, where he's ahead in double digits. Uh, I assume he will pick up delegates in a number of other places because of this proportional count. So my suspicion is that we'll come out of Super Tuesday uh, with Romney squarely in the lead, but neither Santorum nor Gingrich out of the race uh, by any means, and neither of them inclined to bow out. They have money, and why not? It's a long way to go. Romney is trying to run as the grown-up in the room. Uh, he looks statesmanlike. Uh, I, I, I don't just mean his physical appearance, you know, he's capable of projecting uh, someone you can plausibly imagine in the White House meeting with, I don't know, the ambassador from France or, or, or you know, a high-level delegation. Um, frankly, in my heart of hearts, I don't think that even people who support Gingrich can imagine him in that role. Uh, I think they support him for other reasons. Uh, and I think Santorum, you know, I, I think the people who support Santorum haven't really had to confront that question. We, there's been talk about electability, but it's always been in terms of, can this person beat Obama? As you get further along, I think people start asking the question, can I see this guy as president? I must say, this, this gets me down to my bottom line on evaluation of the whole thing, which is, I sort of don't see how any of them can win, which, which is a very peculiar situation. I don't see how Romney can lose. I also don't see how he can win. Uh, and the same goes in different ways for each of them. It's a remarkably unsettled and open race. Uh, and I think it's going to remain that way. I think a Romney versus Obama election could actually be more substantive and more focused on actual policy debates than any that we've seen in recent years. And the reason is that for all his efforts in the primaries, Romney really cannot plausibly paint himself as a guy who's opposed to the idea of government uh, uh, or as you know, a real uh, uh, right-wing radical. And he's not a guy who looks comfortable calling people socialist, secret, Muslim, Kenyan-born conspirators to take over the world. It just doesn't come naturally to him, and I don't see him trying it. And it's, and it's not the way he would win. The way he would win uh, is by inspiring confidence in his seriousness and his professionalism uh, and his expertise. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, that is what I think will ultimately carry him to the nomination, and it will make him, I think, a formidable presidential candidate. Obama will have to run then on his record. Obama will not be able, in running against Romney, to have quite the benefit uh, uh, he's had in the past of saying, uh, uh, vote for me because look what the alternative is.